Hey guys, we're going to run through a quick explanation and discussion of the solo growth model. The solo model was created to depict economic growth based on three variables, capital accumulation, labor, and technology. The graph of the solo model shows us output per worker in terms of the amount of physical capital in the economy. The typical production function is given as y equals f of k and l, or GDP equals a function of capital and labor. However, the solo graph requires that these variables be put into per worker terms. So in order to do that, we'd have to divide the function by L. This gives us a lower case, Y equals F of K, or output per worker equals capital per worker. The slope of this curve is known as the marginal product of capital, or MPK. It is the change in output per worker that occurs from a one unit change in capital per worker. The marginal product of capital is decreasing here, which makes the curve concave. This means that each additional unit of capital results in a lesser increase of output per worker. The solo model also shows us that a loss in the amount of capital per worker occurs over time due to depreciation as well as an increase in the number of workers or a change in their efficiency. We can show this on the graph by multiplying the level of capital against the variables depreciation rate, change in population, and change in worker efficiency. In the solo model, all output that is produced goes towards either consumption or investment to offset this loss in capital. Investment can be expressed as being equal to the savings rate, S, times the output per person, Y. In the solo model, countries reach a sort of equilibrium called a steady state. That is, where the capital per worker remains constant. Investment in capital and loss in capital must cancel each other out at this point. On the graph, this is where the level of investment meets the level of depreciation. We usually depict the level of output per worker as Y star at this point and the level of capital per worker as K star. If a country is at a point in which their investment is currently higher than the depreciation rate of capital, then their level of capital will grow towards the steady state point because the, their investment is higher than the loss of capital. The same is true on the opposite side as well. If the current investment is less than the current depreciation rate of capital, then the amount of capital that they have will decrease because their investment is less than loss. Therefore, despite where the country currently is, they will continue to be pulled towards the steady state level of capital and output per worker unless they are able to change some fundamental aspects of the economy, such as savings rate or the depreciation rate. Once a country reaches its steady state, the economy will become stagnant and growth can only be achieved through innovation and or technological advancements. This aspect of the solo model that suggests that all economies under equal circumstances will converge over time to have the same amount of income per worker. That is to say that the gap between the rich and poor countries will shrink. This is because in poor countries, each additional unit of capital will have greater returns than in the richer countries because they have started with much less capital. And the richer countries will experience the diminishing returns of capital at a much higher degree. In the real world, this provides an explanation for why China's GDP has had an average growth rate of nearly 10% over the last 25 years, while the average GDP growth rate in the UK has only been around 0.5% for the same time frame. So, if the solo model holds, over time, as China increases its level of capital, it will converge with the UK until they both have about the same income per worker. Alright guys, well that's the solo model. Hopefully this video has been of some help to your understanding of it. Thanks for watching and have a good one.